Hello, my name is Jennifer Shlomovich and I'm a vegan confidence coach. I specialize in helping vegans eliminate people pleasing so they can confidently be themselves and navigate the challenges of having a lifestyle different from the people around them. Here on my channel, The Confident Vegan, I share a variety of supportive resources, including inspiring interviews and recipe videos. Today, my special guest is Shabari Monica Das, who is also a returning guest. We had another really great conversation recently, and I will make sure to include that in the notes below this video. Um, but yeah, so Shabari is the founder and manager of World Vegan Market, leader of the London Vegan Business Network, founder and owner of Shabari Snack Shack, ambassador at Shabari Loves Tropic, and founder and owner of Ethigreen. Shabari is a visionary entrepreneur who aspires to make a real difference in the world. She's been vegan for nearly 27 years and has always been passionate about animal rights, human rights, and green issues. Shabari is also a published academic author and has written a research paper about greenwashing. She started the world vegan market as a way to support vegan businesses and to make veganism more accessible to everyone. The market has grown rapidly since its launch and now has a global audience of thousands. Shabari has come back to discuss with me why certain products are not considered vegan, as well as common areas of resistance that people have towards veganism. So I know this is going to be a great discussion. And welcome back, Shabari. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jen. Really delighted uh, to, to be your guest again. I really enjoyed it last time. And um, thank you again for the for the opportunity to be on your show again. I really enjoyed our conversation last time as well. And I think want to thank you for coming back. I know you're very busy. You're doing all kinds of exciting things. So thanks for spending some time to have this next important conversation with me. Um, oh, you're very because, welcome. <laughs> so yeah, so before we do that, um, can you share a little bit about your vegan story in case anyone missed the last interview that we had together? Yeah, sure. So um, I became a vegan um, almost 27 years ago. I was already a vegetarian at the time for a couple of years. And um, uh, I thought that that was enough um, until I went along to a local green fair and um, Animal Aid, um, which is one of the largest um, animal rights organisations in the UK, had a stall there. And um, I actually picked up some literature um, to do with um, the cruelty of the egg industry and the cruelty of the dairy industry. And I was really shocked. I, I, I really thought that um, I was uh, doing enough being um, a vegetarian. I used to think um, that um, uh, vegans um, were a bit extreme. Um, and uh, until I, I read that literature and that really, really opened my eyes and um, shortly after that um i i became vegan and um in fact actually my body had started to to change as well in terms of like um um allergies and uh, and i found that because um i had um i had read um you know uh, that literature um it it sort of it sort of got in in into my head and um and I actually uh, started physically um rejecting um eggs and 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 then dairy I I just could no longer eat them um any anymore and uh, yeah so um so that's how how I became vegan. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I can relate too. In the beginning, I started just paying attention to how food was making me feel. I was having skin issues and sinus issues, and I was reading about dairy. Dairy is really, really bad for us. <laughs> like is, realizing, and, and the thing is, um, well, you know, humans are the only species that actually has um milk from another species. Oh, uh, uh, you know, after a, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, in 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 adulthood, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, you're you're right. It's because I'm not aware of any other species that do that, and so yeah, yeah it wasn't. Um, and I decided to take do an experiment and take a break from dairy for 30 days. And 
I, I felt better in ways that I, I didn't even realize I was feeling bad in certain ways that I was until I had taken that out of my diet for 30 days. And during that time, I started looking up dairy-free recipes and a lot of vegan recipes came up and I'm like, oh, this looks really exciting. This looks better than the stuff that I make now. <laughs> and so, um, and then, and now here we are. And, and it took a couple of years for me to fully transition over. Uh, mm -hmm. My, a lot of my viewers know that, you know, it took me a couple of years. I, I was afraid of the judgment of others and that's what held me back from fully transitioning. But now here we are and and here we are having this discussion and some of these things about misconceptions and dairy and egg industry like you were mentioning before mm. there's a lot of things you know people wonder well why is that really not vegan such as like honey right or mm. silk or wool like wool you're not killing the sheep to get the wool so why is wool considered not vegan so or or honey for example too because you're not killing the bee you don't have to kill the bee to get the honey so that's but but we're gonna really have a deep dive on that because i think it's really important to to take some time out to answer some of these questions for people who might either be new to their vegan journey or are not vegan yet but might be thinking about it or or if you're someone who wants a way to explain these things when you get questions if you're a vegan who gets these questions all the time mm. and you'd like an easy resource to help you with that shibari and i are here for you <laughs> <laughs> <Absolutely. Today. laughs> to have all of that and then we're also going to talk about the resistances that people have towards veganism because there's a lot of them as well and misconceptions but first how about we dive deep? We can talk about, um, I have jotted down in my notes here that especially, specifically today, I want us to talk about eggs, dairy, uh, honey, silk, and wool. And then we're also gonna talk about alternatives for that. And if there's anything else, Shabari, that you feel is important to add to the list as well, feel free. So let's start with eggs and dairy. Why are eggs and dairy not ethical? Um, well, um, first of all, um, eggs and, and dairy can can never be vegan, first of all, because um, uh, there is derived from an, uh, an animal and um, veganism is a philosophy and a lifestyle um, where as far and uh, as um, uh, practicable um, that uh, you uh, live without um, animal products. Um, so, um with regards to the egg industry, um, it's it's really um, a horrible, horrible, um, cruel industry. Um, what happens is that um, in intensive farming, um, the hens are actually made um, to lay eggs by them creating a false um, day and night, so that, that so that they lay eggs. Um, uh, tw twice a day which is um, un unnatural and also um, for those who may not know um, male chicks are um, useless in the um, egg industry and so um, they are thrown into mincers at a, at a day old it, it's awful it's really really awful what 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 they do and um, yeah you know for uh, people who are vegetarian for example um, who um are thinking okay you know and and i was there um uh, when i was vegetarian i, I thought that um, that it, it was uh, it was enough um but uh, as vegetarians you're actually perpetuating um that industry so you know those who uh, those who are watching this who are vegetarians um need to consider well you know are the eggs that you are you're eating are the, are they truly cruelty free and um and they're not you you know um they can never be cruelty free um with the with dairy um you know the the cows dairy cows are pumped full of um antibiotics full of uh, growth hormones that's why um you know if you see footage of uh, of dairy cows um their um udders are huge and then you know they're uh, scraping a lot along the the ground and they end up um, with um diseases like mastitis and um you know you all that is uh, is going into into your milk um that uh, that you you drink and and again um, um, vegetarians who who drink milk 
um it is so cruel you know like um if if you are um still drinking milk uh, eat, you know as, as as vegetarians um or, or even as non-vegetarians and and you again you are perpetuating uh, a very very cruel industry and um yeah it, and and then what happens to the the dairy cows at the end of when they're no longer able to produce milk and the thing is um cows can only produce milk by becoming pregnant and so they are um uh, unnaturally made to become pregnant and um you know a lot of like uh, religious groups for example you know i come from a hindu background and um where cows are revered but um they they think that um that drinking milk is okay and it's definitely not okay <laughs> you know it it is uh, you know i i would say that well a lot of people might say that it's even more cruel than um, than the meat industry and um yeah uh, so again like um and i, I think that uh, religious groups you know hin hindu groups need to um need to wake up to this really because it, it, it's just um you know um if you're saying that you love the cow uh, if you if you love cows um uh, and yet uh, still drink milk um then you can't be you can't be loving cows um you just can't um yeah so and then like um with um honey for example uh, again um honey is mass produced and what they do is they um uh, take the honey and um, for the bees they would uh, give like um, something like a sugar solution which mm -hmm. is uh, which is devoid of any nutrients for the bees and um, they would also bring in a um, a queen bee um, and um, and once that queen bee is um, is is useless for them they will then do away with the with the queen bee so again um, honey isn't you know what with honey being um, a uh, an animal product but also it's a cruel industry as well and then um, when it comes to silk oh my goodness I mean silk um, it's not it's a product that isn't needed at all not at all um, you know and, and I, I cannot understand why anybody would want to to wear silk because um, what they do is uh, they either bake or boil the silkworms um mm. to obtain the silk and um and it's just horrible it's just really horrible and you know um like a uh, I don't know exactly how many um, silkworms um, they they require, but it, it's it's a lot um, just to, just to make um, a, a silk shirt or a silk uh, sh uh, a scarf. Um, so it, it's really not needed a, 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 at all. And then wool again, like um, wool. Uh, there are so many alternatives to to wool. Um, you know the um the the sheep are are shorn um uh like about by the by the farmers and um you know i've seen it being done on uh, on footage and like um you can see blood and 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 you know they're really like um um not treated very well at all um and uh, again um the wool industry is a uh, is cruel so you know um yeah, I, 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 I can um, go on uh, about uh, all these um, different uh, industries as to as to why they, they are cruel and, you know, definitely um, not vegan, not vegan at all. Thank you for sharing all of that. Before I continue, can you hear lawnmowers outside? I don't know if it's coming through the audio because there's <laughs> land. OK, good. Because <laughs> when we, like, after we started, all these landscapers are like outside and they're like doing work. <laughs> So I wasn't sure if it was coming through. <laughs> so no, no. Um, it, okay, it, good. It, it's all fine. <laughs> okay, good. Because I had this setting on my microphone for background noise. So I just wanted to make sure no one was hearing that. So, <laughs> um, But getting to what you were saying, thank you for taking a moment. Because, yeah, it is really terrible how um, these animals are treated, you know, in the egg industry, in the dairy industry. Um, and then, and then you hear you, and you know, and then in terms of the silkworms being boiled and baked, that's just terrible. And mm -hmm. and you know that that's we and like you said, we don't we don't need any of these different things. And then you know the wool, how how they're being treated, you know the fact that 
it sounds like they're being handled really roughly mm -hmm. and you know what's happening to male chicks they consider them useless and you know horrific things i was really horrified when i learned about all of what happens to them and and then yeah the baby cows and then and then you know this poor cow is having her baby taken away from her yeah. Yeah. and it's traumatic for both the mother and the baby and then you know terrible things can be done to the babies i mean that's where veal mm -hmm. comes from right so yeah. yeah all of these different things are just you know when you think about it it just it's just really heart-wrenching and whatever we can do to do our part um you know it just doesn't align with my values once i learned all of these different things it just wasn't anything I, you know, wanted to be a part of. And, and yes, yeah. it's a process, you mm -hmm. know, any type of transition is challenging. I'm a vegan in a non-vegan household. So it took me some time mm -hmm. to figure out a way to make that transition work for me and my family. Mm -hmm. But when it's something that's important to you, you, you find a way to make it work. And, and it's about mm -hmm. progress, not perfection and, and whatever ways that you can make mm -hmm. these things work. And I just wanted to ask, you know, like sometimes you see things about, well, what about ethically sourced eggs or what about, you know, some people are like, what if, what if, you know, it comes from a farm where they're gentle to the animals, right? Like, or the honey, right? I've seen, I've seen the honey debate on vegan groups where some, you know, are, you know, where it comes up, like, what if it's coming from a, you know, someone who raises bees in, in a kind manner? Um, so what are your thoughts? on when people make those types of statements well it's a it's an oxymoron really i mean you know if we if people are talking about ethical <laughs> eggs um there's no such thing as uh, as ethical eggs uh there, there really isn't um you know like uh it, it, yeah it, it obviously is it's up to the person whether they um decide to um have um their own um backyard eggs or not but um but it can never be co considered vegan because it's a it's an animal product and it's still animal exploitation and uh and veganism is, is about um doing away with um animal exploitations and um and you know living a lifestyle that is is not reliant on animal products so you know it, even if you're having so-called ethical eggs or so-called ethical honey you're actually um relying on um on animal uh, products and it, it's still exploitation um so 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 yes that that's what uh what i i, I would say you know the the honey a lot of people as you say might uh be thinking oh yes but um the the beekeeper individual beekeepers are are looking after their bees or, or whatever but um but you know um we, we have to remember that um honey is for is for the bees you know it's not for the humans and um and they would still um take the take the honey um and give the give the bees um a nutrient deficient um sugar sugar solution um which uh which isn't nice at, at all for the for the bees and mm -hmm. um yeah so it you know it's still um in uh, like um th there's still exploitation um involved uh, in it, you know even if um people think that uh, that they are having um ethical eggs or ethical honey or ethical milk etc right you're right and and just like that also the milk is you know just like the honey is for the bees it's their mm. food the milk is the food for the baby cow, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, absolutely. And so you're taking, you know, even if you're letting the mother have the baby cow with her and you're treating them nicely, you're still taking that baby's food away from it mm -hmm. and, and making that mother cow work extra hard to be able to meet the demands of milk for you and milk for the cow. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I feel like, you know, thank you for, you know, touching touching on that because you know i think it's just another level of exploitation right maybe there mm -hmm. maybe one form is more harsher than the other but mm -hmm. it's still it's still exploiting the animal it, it um, is. and and we don't need any of these things uh mm -hmm. there's so many amazing alternatives like for honey i usually use agave nectar or maple syrup mm -hmm. um you know both work i mean agave nectar especially has like similar texture similar taste it's like why you know you, you don't really miss honey you know it's very and, and agave nectar i remember when it was like a new thing but now mm. you can find it 
and like mainstream grocery stores now you can find it everywhere so mm -hmm. you don't need to bother the bees <laughs> to get um Absolutely. And in fact, you can actually get um, vegan honey as well. I, I've i had um, somebody who um, uh, sells vegan honey. Um, uh, well, I, I don't think they run that business anymore, but they used to be one of my stall holders. And, um, and uh, the, the, there's a few actually here in the in the UK um, when I've uh, been along to um, vegan markets, uh, actually in person vegan markets, I have seen um, people sell vegan honey and um the the one who were was my stall holder um actually like um it uh it, it is really nice um you know and and it actually sets uh it like um when you put it in the in the fridge um it actually sets as well and mm. you know when you mix it in with um uh you can put it in anything you can put it in cakes uh your know, vegan cakes obviously um uh but also in um in like um tea Tea as well herbal tea um and uh yeah like um it's a, it, it does taste taste nice so you know um there are so many alternatives to honey that you don't actually need um you don't need to disturb the bees <laughs> and and the bees you know the bee populations are already hurting mm -hmm. which impacts how you know it implants just everything, you know, and implant impacts because they're not if they're if we the less bees we have, the less things will get pollinated, which impacts food and just mm -hmm. everything else. Mm -hmm. And so the bees should be just left alone. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, and then eggs, there's so many vegan egg substitutes out there now. I mean, especially in the past few years, it really has come a long way. Like I know just egg is a really big one here in the US. Um, and then I've seen recently in the past year, there's like a company where it looks like a, like a hard boiled egg. You can get, you know, things that look like you can get an egg substitute looks like a poached egg. Like you can, mm -hmm. you can, uh, there's been so many advances in, mm -hmm. um, the egg, you know, making egg substitutes that look realistic and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and work just as well. Um, what are your experiences with that? Um, well, uh, yes, um, in the in the UK, you can get um, a powdered form of a, a vegan egg, and um, uh, which is really good because you um, all you need to do is um, mix it up with water, um, and then you can make um, omelets, you can make um, scrambled eggs, you can make like um, a Spanish um, omelet with with it. Uh, it's really really versatile, and um, there are other ones that you can use that. Um, are um specifically for um for making vegan cakes etc um and uh i've actually seen on um facebook groups that uh, that people have uh, been making their own vegan eggs and um you know you you uh, like um using um uh, certain items for the um for the white part and then using other items um including uh, i think um uh like a, a a vegan um gelatin type um thing like i, I think it uh, agar uh, agar yeah is, it, yeah it, that's it, like that a it's of... like from kelp i think like it's from seaweed and it has like a, it makes things very jelly like that, that's right so they use that for um the uh the 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 yolk um part of the of the egg and in fact um there's um a, a japanese um restaurant here uh, a restaurant chain here in the uk that does make um vegan egg and um they have a uh, 50% of their um uh, menu is, is actually vegan um so um so so yes it, it is definitely um catching on and then again um there are so many um versions of, uh, like a vegan um mayonnaises as well uh, there's a huge variety coming in all kinds of different flavors as uh, as well um there's one um famous um uh, company that uh, that actually i believe they um they they sued a or they tried to sue um um, a small um a company uh, one of a smaller company because they um felt that they couldn't call themselves um uh, mayo or, uh, or mayonnaise and then they they lost in in court and then um, next minute you know they've brought out a vegan mayonnaise <laughs> yeah yeah wow yeah it's also become really big because um 
before I, I could only find a uh, vegan mayo and like a health food store or mm -hmm. like stores that have a lot of vegan products. But I noticed in the past couple of years that I'm finding it in the regular mainstream grocery stores mm -hmm. where the, there's like a, there's a store brand now that mm -hmm. they'll, they'll have their own version of it. And Hellman's, which is a really big brand here, um, they also came out with a vegan mayonnaise yes. that's really, really... That, that, that's the company that I'm t uh, talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So a lot of these mainstream companies are now, um, are now, uh, you know, doing that and mm. which is great. Um, because I, I've seen the argument where some vegans are like, well, it's still a non-vegan company. But I think it's great to support mm. a non-vegan company who's making vegan products because it helps mm. to show them that there's a demand that people do want these things. And so mm. um, absolutely. And this is the thing, like um, if um, if people start boycotting um, the, these companies, they they won't they, they'll end up um, like uh, discontinuing um, vegan products. And then like um, and then it will be the whole thing again in in the in the press. There's been a lot of negativity in the press um, that uh, veganism is on its way out um, and uh, the, which isn't true. Right. Um, but if uh, if people start boycotting these companies, then um, then they they will think, oh, you know, there's not um, uh, enough demand for vegan products and then start discontinuing um, the, these products. So it's it is really important that um, that, uh, v uh, you know, we vegans actually support um, these companies, um, because for, for me, when I first became vegan, I had to go out of my way um, to health food shops to to find what I wanted you know even things like soya milks um they weren't available in um in you know your suit local supermarket um so I re I'm really pleased that veganism has come such a long way um and that you can get all these um items available uh, uh you know in uh, in your local supermarket you know so your soya milk your your vegan mayonnaise in fact actually you can get a variety of um of uh of plant-based milks not just soya milk um you know you can get cashew milk you can get almond milk you can get um even uh things like tiger nut milk as well oh i've uh, never heard of that one <laughs> yes, yeah i first tried it actually from um uh, mind you i i don't know that you can get it from um uh from your supermarket i i did get it from um years and years ago from the health food shop um but yeah you know there, there's an endless variety of uh, of plant-based milks um that uh, are readily um accessible um say same with vegan mayonnaise, um, same with like um, any kind of all, all alternatives to um, uh, to, to dairy um, and um, uh, a, a dairy meat and fish uh, products as well. I mean, the, the number of vegan cheeses that are out there, I mean, like, um, yeah, you know, there's a huge variety and you've got your mainstream um, cheese companies actually bringing out um, a vegan version as well. So and, and I that noticed that <laughs> that would not have happened years, you know, even like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, and and that's and that's really really great. I think it's great that these things are becoming more mainstream. Yeah, there's a lot that I'm finding in the grocery store that I wouldn't have been able to find in the grocery store five years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know now you can find an assortment of vegan ice creams, vegan milks, um, vegan yogurt, uh, coffee creamers. There's so many different creamer varieties now that you can find mm -hmm. in your regular grocery store. So. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's great that any, any time and also like, you know, the fast food chains, some of them have experimented by providing a vegan burger or vegan fried chicken. Mm. And, and, and I feel like that's great progress. Cause I, I I've seen the, that argument too, on the different vegan groups where, you know, maybe someone who is concerned about the fryer and, and mm. where, and where that was cooked. Mm. It's still a great transitional product. A, it shows that, that you can make a good product and not hurt an animal for it. Mm -hmm. And um, and you can still have those fast food things that you want. And you don't you don't need to support the animal industry. You can 
have a, a similar tasting product with a similar texture, similar taste, mm. and no, and no one was harmed for it. <laughs> and mm. and so, mm. and I think that's what's great about these different companies who are are taking those chances and putting it out there. I think it's, I think it's all great that we've gotten to a point where they're even willing to do that. And so I think that's something that should be acknowledged and celebrated. Oh, uh, for sure. De definitely. Um, you know, nowadays, like um, uh, kids, vegan kids, they don't have to feel left out. Like, uh, say, for example, um, their friends want to go to like um, um, a, a fast food place. Um, they no longer have to feel left out um, because they can uh, get a vegan burger from there, which um, wouldn't have happened um, years ago. And, um, you know, so kids maybe uh, they they could be feeling a, a little bit left out or uh, like um not being able to to fit in um because they're vegan um uh, and uh, so i i think it is a great thing that um these fast food places um are um uh, giving a, a a vegan option be because you know um like her kids they do want to fit in these days uh, well yeah. you know, they, they uh, they've always wanted to to fit in and maybe in the past they've felt a bit left out they felt a bit uh, kind of like um being the odd one out um, being the only vegan um in school or or, or whatever i mean i'm i'm sure they, i mean yeah definitely there's a lot more vegan kids um around but um but you know it I, I feel that it's a good thing that they um don't have to be left out when they go to these fast food places yeah absolutely it, it's so great that there's all this variety that that's out there um and before we go on to the common misconceptions, we talked about eggs and dairy and, and honey substitutes. What are some substitutes for silk and wool? Um, so with um, uh, substitutes for, for silk, um, for example, um, you can um, uh, buy, pro, um, buy um, uh, clothes that um, are made out of rayon. Rayon is um, a, a good um, substitute for, for silk um, and, uh, and even polyester as well. Like um, polyester, you can um, get like um, that kind of like shiny effect um, that, um, that silk has. Um, so, um, so, so yes so th those are two great um alternatives to to silk um you know even uh, even cotton as well um i um uh, one of my stall holders, actually, um, her, um, well, my previous stall holder, she no longer runs the, the business. She used to do all kinds of clever things with them, um, with, with cotton and, um, you know, even like um, sort of like silk substitutes um, uh, as, uh, as, as well. So, um, so, so yeah, nowadays, um, you know, you don't need to, well, you, you, I, I don't think you, like silk um really has a has a place at, at all to to be honest and there are some really really great um alternatives like um you know, your cotton your poly polyester and your rayon um in terms of wool um yes you can get um um like uh, acrylic clothes you know your your hats and your cardigans and your jumpers etc made from acrylic and in fact uh, going back to um my previous stall holder um um, she would do quite um, a number of show and tells and um, like uh, there was one um, particular item that she made she made um, a scarf made out of um, eucalyptus um, wool and um, oh I've it, never it, heard it, of that yes yes and it looked absolutely amazing I mean like um, yeah it, it really did and and um, you know, so so there are so many um, alternatives that, that are out there. Um, you know, people really don't need to, to buy um, silk um, or, or wool or, or anything like that because you can find alternatives. And, um, you know, as I mentioned about my um, uh, former stall holder, you know, she was doing all kind of clever things with, with cotton and, you know, the, the eucalyptus wool. I mean, like I'd never heard of, um, of that uh, be before either um but uh, but yeah um you know it, it's um 
uh, eco-friendly as well as being vegan as uh, as well. And that was really important to her. And she would go out and, and source all these things. Um, and, um, and yeah, there was a, a company that she would um, contact. Um, I forget the name of it, but that's where she would get her vegan wool from. Um, you know, it, it's entirely vegan. Um, no animal products, uh, no animal ing ingredients or no animal sources whatsoever. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it's a case of just um, going out there, um, checking labels, um, looking um, for uh, all alternatives and also even writing to, to companies as well, you know, asking them, do they have a vegan version? Because the more people that do that, the more people that actually write to mainstream companies and and um and actually say to them well you know i'd like do you have a vegan version um of uh, uh, of you know your hats or your coats or, or or whatever you know do do you have um uh, uh vegan wool um you know it will make them think well you know if and and if enough people do this um then they'll see that there is a demand so um you know the the, the power of the keyboard or the power of the um uh, you know of, of the pen is it well it, it's very powerful and um and you know you can make change actually um by by doing those things you know by making it known and social media as well that's a, a way of actually getting to to these companies um you know getting them to notice so um you know that that's another way of actually like um uh well you know um facilitating change that's great yeah the 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 power of the pen or the keyboard is is very important and and when companies have come out with something you know, there's a popular brand of ranch dressing and I, they, they had it, they recently came out with a vegan ranch and mm. I had tried it earlier in the year and I sent them a note to the customer service just saying how happy I was that they came out with it and I hope they mm. keep it on. Mm. Because mm. I feel like that's something important too. If there's a not typical vegan company out there that created mm. something vegan and, and, and it's a good product and you like it, just let them know, hey, thanks for creating this. I hope you keep it on because this allows them to know that, oh, this is actually something people care about. If enough people write to them, then they'll maybe they'll consider making something else even vegan. So it's it's so important to also thank them. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for, for sure. For sure. Um, I remember actually like years and years ago, um, I wrote to this particular company. It was a vegetarian company, not a vegan company. And um, I asked, um, well, um, why can't you make your uh, your um, products vegan? And they were they were saying, oh, it's impossible. You know, they have to use um, egg white, and um, it was not possible to use anything else um, that uh, because the quality wouldn't be good. And then some years later, they brought out vegan versions uh, of um, of their products, and um, and I thought that uh, well, you know, they told me that it was impossible. It was not impossible. It's just that they didn't have a demand for it at the time right. <laughs> yeah so you know um like uh it, it is amazing what um the power of the pen or the power of the keyboard can do and um you know um if enough if enough people do that um then you can make change yeah abs absolutely such a great point um so now i want to just like pivot over uh, I feel like there's so many great things to talk about and uh, on this topic alone. Um, but yeah, basically there's there's so much out there. You, you don't need these animal products anymore because there's so many great substitutes. And if there's something that you want, uh, you know, if there's a company that has something that you used to really like or something that you like, if you're if you're not vegan yet, you know, just but you're thinking about it, then you 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 can write and let them know, and 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 at least if anything, it gets them to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because maybe they wouldn't had enough thought about it before. Maybe you're planting that seed, yeah. and down the line, it'll happen. Um. So yeah, they, this is all great, and so now there are some very common areas of resistance when it comes to <laughs> being <laughs> vegan, and and the first one is that I want to bring up is. Being ve uh, veganism is unhealthy. 
And so I've heard, you know, there's the typical arguments of where you're getting your protein and, you know, <laughs> you know, your calcium and, and, you know, nutrient, you know, being nutrient deficient. And then the other part of that argument that comes up from time to time, and I'm noticing it's been spiking up in the news recently, out of the recently an article I, I came across a couple of weeks ago, you know, talking about, well, veganism is unhealthy because, you know, these, these, you know, process, you know, vegan burger replacements are unhealthy. And, 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 and so it's frustrating because it's like that, that burger, they're, they're making out like that burger replacement or any other type of processed vegan food represents all of veganism. But that's like saying a fast food company represents all of, you know, someone's diet, right? Yes. Just like you can eat, whenever this argument comes up, I always say to people, just like you can eat as healthy or as unhealthy as you want on a non-vegan diet, <laughs> you can also eat as healthy or as unhealthy as you want on a vegan diet. <laughs> Uh, absolutely and this is the thing about about the press you know they um they, they they want to just it's almost as though it's kind of like oh you know um this is have a veg have have a go at vegans um day and uh yeah so um there has been a, a lot of uh, negativity in the press about um veganism being unhealthy because of the um of 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 the of the substitute you know like a uh, vegan burgers and vegan sausages and that kind Kind of thing but um but yeah it is true um you know uh like um that is only just um part of it and you know a lot of um uh, the people who are transitioning to become vegan, you know, they really appreciate having things like um, vegan burgers and vegan sausages and vegan bacon and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I like eating those things, but, you know, it's not that I eat them all the time. Um, I um, I eat, um, uh, you know, um, whole food. I have a mixture of um, whole food, um, plant based di diet and also um, junk food vegan as well. So, um you know like i i just feel that um, the press kind of want to to pick on on vegans and and like say if you compare um a, a vegan sausage um with um a, like um a, a meat sausage i mean that meat sausage is is just like um a hundred times worse than the than your vegan sausage because um you know first of all um meat eating uh, if people um cons consume large amounts of uh, of meat you know they're more prone to getting heart disease they're mo more prone to getting um heart attacks they're more prone to getting um colon cancer um you know there there's so many like um adverse health um uh, effects of of having like um large um amounts of meat in 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 people's um uh, in in people's diets and um and you know um uh, like a with um with like say um a vegan burger or a vegan sausage um it's it's not um it doesn't have any cholesterol in there and um and so you know in, in that way um it is um a, a lot uh, a lot healthier it doesn't have the um the saturated fats yes it's it's not healthy to be eating um just vegan sausages and vegan burgers all the time because you know you do need to have like a, a variety um but to, but certainly um you know uh it, it you you don't have those um adverse um health effects uh, in in the same way as uh, people that do consume l uh, large amounts of um of, of meat so um so so yes um like uh, it, it it it's really i don't know how it managed to to get into into the news um that uh, vegan diets are are unhealthy um but uh, but yeah like um for the, for the people uh, at home who are watching this who who are vegan and and you know they may be getting a, a hard time from non-vegans um who think that uh, that vegan uh, diets are, are unhealthy um you can mention this to them and then you can also mention that um uh you know having um it's okay to have the occasional um vegan burger or the vegan sausage or whatever but you know have a look at what else is on your plate you know make sure that um that you know you you have like um your carbs and and you have like plenty of vegetables 
and salads as well. And um, and so, you know, um, that that is really a, a great way to actually go about doing things, you know, looking at looking to see what is on your what is on your plate and, and not having um, lots of fried things all the time. I mean, you know, these days you can um, use your air fryer for any, everything and anything. And um, and it's so much healthier. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and that's the thing. It's everything in moderation. I'm also mostly, you know, whole food plant-based. It's like the 80, 20 rule where like, you know, 80% of the time I'm having, you know, a more healthy balanced way of eating. And then yeah, on the weekend, especially there's, you know, places in the near where I live that have really great vegan desserts. Maybe I'll go have one of those, or maybe, you know, I'll, I'll go have a vegan, you know, burger that, uh, you know, I wouldn't, you know, but I don't eat it all the time. It's nice to have that. And, and it's just nice to enjoy it or make my, you know, get some vegan cheese and have a vegan mm -hmm. pizza, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just like anything. It's all about balance and you can be a male, a malnourished non-vegan, mm -hmm. right? Because it's really all about being mindful about the vitamins and the nutrients that you're bringing in there's there's so many different forms of vegan protein out there and and you know if whether you're vegan or not vegan you should be going to the doctor once a year just to get your blood work checked anyway mm. just to mm. get your health checked and yeah i've been you know since i've been vegan i haven't been told i was nutrient deficient like i've had all my <laughs> requirements and and you know, I know B12 is like the, the big one that comes up where that's the like main thing that um, needs to be supplemented, but that's very easy. And there is, there's a lot of great multivitamins out there. If you're someone who's just really busy and you feel like you can't be on top of all of your, you know, managing your nutrients, um, mm -hmm. you know, vegans and non-vegans take multivitamins. So it's not mm -hmm. just... <laughs> I feel like it's just uh, easy absolutely. to pick on the vegan. <laughs> yeah, and um, and you know, I, I would um uh, definitely recommend um taking um uh, a vitamin B twelve or even um a multi um vitamin um and uh, you know there, there there's nothing wrong with that. You're just um ensuring um that you're having um you know e enough um adequate in intake of of those um vitamins. But um you know um with regards to vitamin B twelve um. You, you could get enough from um you you know your soya milks and your and your fortified um cereals and and that kind of thing but um but i, I definitely would um uh, recommend um uh, taking a, a vitamin b12 uh, supplement ju just to just to kind of like um make sure and um uh, just to um those who are perhaps um, newly vegan um your body actually stores or your liver stores um vitamin uh, b12 for for six years mm. um and uh and then after that um you know it, it gets depleted if you if you're not keeping on on, on top of your um uh, vitamin b12 intake so but um you know definitely i i would make sure because um if it if somebody is not having enough vitamin b12 there are um uh, adverse health effects of, uh, of that, you know, like, for example, tingling in the, in the, in the fingers, um, and, um, you know, possible like, um, a neurolo neurological, um, um, uh, adverse effects. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, um, you know, definitely I, I would, um, and it, you know, if you just set a, a time each day, um, at, at your main meal, um, to have your, your vitamin B12 or your, um, multivitamin, um, then, um, then, you know, it, it's actually more easily absorbed, um, during uh, a meal time. Um, the other vitamin that I did want to mention, and I might have mentioned about this um last time as well is vitamin um d um you know making sure that uh, because uh, here in the uk you don't get a lot of um sunshine uh, so you know it's, it's quite difficult to actually get um um uh, vitamin d from from the sun alone um so and uh, you know you can get um vegan uh vitamin d3 which is more um uh, absorbable by the by the body um and uh, uh, yeah, so th really those two things and iodine as well, you know, making sure that you get um, enough iodine. But uh, but if you if you take um, a multivitamin supplement, um, you should get all, all those things um, in any way. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Those are very great points. Uh, thanks, thanks for sharing them. Uh, yeah, and again, you can have these same issues as a non-vegan. So it's just about you know our, your food choices as, and everyone's got different needs too. So again, go to the doctor, get your blood work checked, take these you know supplements. Um, but yeah, I I've been vegan for seven years. Just you know, actually yesterday was my vegan anniversary. Ah, oh, so, well, happy anniversary! Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, April twenty ninth. Uh, 2017 was when I when I did it. So um, this is going to be airing in the early part of June, but we're recording this on April 30th. So uh, yeah, so I just came to my seven year anniversary, and I feel I mean I feel better than when I was not vegan. So it's you know don't don't listen to the noise. Listen to your body, and and if and if something doesn't feel right, you know if there's something off nutritionally. You can run into that whether you're vegan or not vegan mm -hmm. and it's just working with your doctor or you know finding the things that you know feel good for you but that has nothing to do with veganism <laughs> mm -hmm. yes <laughs> um we're almost short on time but i just wanted to make sure that we cover a couple of other things before we wrap up and the one of the next one i wanted to talk about is veganism is too expensive <laughs> So, right that's a, that's another common one and that's yeah, another common common one yes and, and so a lot of that has to do around yes there's a lot of processed vegan products out there like the burgers or the vegan cheese that are pricey or other types of vegan you know vegan cookies can be pricey and other things mm. but that's again the but there's a lot of things that are vegan that are not that right beans and mm. rice and quinoa and you can make mm. your own veggie burgers they're very easy to make i have a few different recipes on this channel for you know really easy veggie burgers to make they just bake in the oven they're oil free you know you just you, you just need like some can, some kind of canned bean <laughs> you know or chickpea <laughs> some really good spices um and i usually put oats in there to like hold it together mm -hmm. and so we it's so easy so you don't have to spend a lot of money on on these things you know fruits and vegetables nuts and seeds and the, i know there are people who make their own nut milks like i haven't done it but i know there are people who do that as well mm -hmm. so there's 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 so many ways to to save money it just it and in fact you can actually spend less as a vegan because you're not buying the meat and you're not buying the other the other stuff you you can you know you can make buy a bag of lentils mm -hmm. to make lentil loaf right that and and like you know you can make you know a bag of dried beans you can make a whole bunch of things from all that soup mm -hmm. yeah what, what is what is your take on that argument <laughs> Um, well, the thing is, um, if you are going to, it can be expensive if you are going to have um, vegan burgers and your vegan cheeses and, and or, you know, all of that kind of thing. Um, it can um, add up. But, um, you know, uh, if uh, if you're on a budget, um, there are things that you can you can you can do um that doesn't cost very much like for example there's um a dish um that uh, there's a, a particular indian dish um that's uh, that's vegan um and that's very common it's called um kitchery um mm. and that uses um just rice and lentils and um and and maybe um like um some onions um uh, garlic and and ginger for flavoring some cheese chilies um and then that, that that that's it you know that's like um a whole um protein um protein uh you got your protein in the lentils and then you got your carbs in the in the rice and then you can maybe have like um a, a side vegetable dish um for, with that as well um we usually have it on it on its own because it's um quite nice um uh actually um it it, it has uh, it packs a punch um by itself um uh, but uh, but yeah that's not expensive um at all and uh, you know if you are um cooking from scratch um it doesn't need to 
be expensive, you know, um, even like um, with um, buying uh, sort of like your tinned beans, et cetera, they're, they're not very costly. Mm -hmm. And um, and even like, say, for example, um, you know, you you want to uh, like um, uh, and, and I would say that um, it's not uh, buying frozen um, peas, for example, or frozen sweet corn. It's not um nutritionally deficient to um a fresh because what they do is they um uh, they they pick the 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 uh, the peas or the sweet corn etc um, and within um two hours they they are um harvested and and then frozen um so you it actually keeps all the nutrients um so and they're not expensive either buying like um frozen peas or frozen sweet corn or frozen mixed veg um you know if you if you don't really um have have uh the t t time to kind of like um cook from scratch every, every day um but um but yeah like um uh, as as i mentioned it, it, you know if you are going to have um uh, uh vegan sausages or vegan burgers and and uh, that kind of thing all the time then it can be um quite uh, expensive um and and you know as you, as you mentioned jen um you can even make your own um uh, vegan burgers using lentils um or using like um uh, beans um you know kidney beans you can make your own sort of like um mexican style um bean burgers um with a uh, with, with uh, like a, your kidney beans and then your um sweet corn and then maybe some chopped um uh, like uh, chopped capsicum in there um, yeah you know you can uh, you th there's so many things that you can actually do um, that um, that like uh, you know um, is uh, is inexpensive but then you know uh, like um, that can be fun as well because you want it to be fun um, and uh, yeah so like um, th th there's uh, no need for, um, for for vegan food to, to be expensive yeah, exactly. Or complicated. Like I, I use frozen vegetables a lot. Like, um, I'll have them on hand, like stir fry veggies, and then I'll throw them in a pan with a can of chickpeas and make a little chickpea stir fry. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, all you need is a really good sauce or some good spices. That dish you mentioned sounded really good, by the way. <laughs> and that's what it is. You know, a lot of it, a lot of the things we crave has to do with the seasoning and the sauces. Mm -hmm. So you put that on, you know, something that's not, you, you don't really need the animal product to enjoy mm -hmm. those same flavors and those same tastes and those same textures. Um, and, and yeah. And, and the other thing I just want to say, like, I know some people might, they might like make a pot of chili, like vegan chili for the week. Mm -hmm. And then you can eat it as a bowl of chili. You could also put it on a baked potato. You could, mm -hmm. Um, you could put it on as nachos. Like you can, mm -hmm. you can have the chili in a different form or have it a little differently each, mm -hmm. each week and do a little something mm -hmm. different with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you could also take the leftovers and turn it into like a burger as well. Like something. Yeah. <laughs> so, Absolutely. so you can take, you can make something and then totally, you know, repackage it in a differently in your meal or repurpose it. And this way you're not cooking a lot of different in, things uh, as well. Um, and the next thing I just wanted to talk about, uh, and we were kind of talking about this and then the topic of, you know, it being too expensive, but being too difficult, right? <laughs> we just shared some examples of just how easy it is to, to be vegan. It doesn't, it can be as complicated or as uncomplicated as you want, you know, and, <laughs> and it, it doesn't, and, and if anything, you know, you were talking about being fun and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm a better cook from being vegan because I learned how I, I, I started using spices mm -hmm. and, and that I never would have used otherwise and learning about different cultures and making different cuisines from other cultures and, and just being exposed to all kinds of flavors. And now I don't even need to follow a recipe book. Like I can go into the store, just grab a few things and just play around in the kitchen or, you know, go to the farmer's market and, and find some vegetables and just turn that into something fun. Like, once you once you learn how to be a vegan cook, mm. there, I feel like the sky's the limit in terms of of what you can make. It's it's and and I've been a much better like my salads are not boring anymore. Like my salads are much more exciting. Like I feel like it definitely does something that 
you know, it, 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 um, it really triggers that creative aspect of ourselves because all the other vegans I've spoken to were all more creative <laughs> mm -hmm. because of it. And um, yeah, so what are your, what is your take on it being too difficult? Um, well, uh, again, um, you know, it can be as difficult as you want it to be, or it can be as easy uh, as, as you want it to, to be. Like, um, you know, for example, um, you know, there might be days when um, you're too exhausted to kind of like cook anything at all. And, um, and all you want to do is just have something simple. Well, beans on toast for example that is um uh, that is vegan um you, you know obviously you have to make sure that um, that the beans um uh, that the, uh, the the can of beans is vegan so you know um check for the for the labeling that there aren't any um flavorings in there um but uh, but yeah beans on toast um you know very simple um that that's vegan uh, again you know you talked about um making um a, a, a chili a, a vegan chili which you can then use for, for a variety of of different things as as well. So it doesn't have to be um uh, uh, complicated at all. Um, you know, you uh, stir fry stir fries are, are, are pretty easy as well. Um, you know, and uh, for for me, I love um. I, I love different types of, of cuisine. So, you know, I don't just stick to just the, the one um, type of cuisine. You know, I, I love um, Indian food. Uh, I love Mexican food, Italian food, um, Thai food, Chinese food. Um, so, you know, I uh, in my cupboard, I do have um, in stock, you know, a variety of, of different flavors as well. So, so you know, th things like um, stir fry jacket potato with um, ratatouille for example you know that's pretty um uh, basic as well um you know and uh, and and rice uh, with a a vegetable curry for example you know that's quite um simple i love tofu you know i really do love love me my too tofu. tofu is really really <laughs> good it's so versatile because it takes on the flavors of whatever you cook mm -hmm. it in you can even make desserts out of it like yeah, yeah. you can do everything with it De definitely yeah ab ab absolutely you can um you know make um with silken tofu you can make like um uh, a variety of uh, of desserts even like vegan um cheesecake um mm -hmm. you can make with um with a uh, silken tofu and um and even like uh, things like say if you wanted to cook um like a a sort of eggy type fried rice um you can use um like a mashed um tofu uh scrambled up and 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 then like um uh add some um flavors in there add some seasoning and then put your rice in there as well so that you get like um vegan um egg fried rice so yeah there, there's um lots of um different things that you can actually um experiment with and um you're absolutely right jen you know like um as as vegans um we can uh you know we've become better cooks we've uh, like um you know experimented with different flavors and um and and yeah you know there's so much that um you can do um which doesn't need to be um uh, complicated i mean yes if you're making like say for example a mushroom wellington that is going to be uh, quite a difficult thing um but uh, but you know that might be like um you know once in a while on a sunday um when um when you've got guests around or, or whatever and you and you know you want to impress them with a uh, with your cul culinary skills um so uh, so so yes you, you you know but um but that that wouldn't be you know all the time um for you for your sort of like everyday meals um they can be very quick and simple yeah and flavorful i you know i'm so busy during the week i usually have some chickpea pasta on hand and toss that with some vegan pesto or or, or some other type of sauce. And so it's, you know, it's a quick way to get some protein. It's delicious. Um, so that's like one of my other go-to things that usually make a to like some kind of air fried tofu. I do like my stir fries. I do like a smashed chickpea sandwich if I'm in a hurry, you know, really easy to do. So yeah, there's, there's so many ways where it can be as difficult or, or as non-difficult as you want it to be. Yeah. And then just a quick little addition, you know, the happy cow app, if you're going out to eat with people in a restaurant, that doesn't have to be difficult either. 
you can ju you just have to do a little bit of research and also like a lot of cuisines typically have dishes that can be easily veganized like when we go to a sushi place there's usually some kind of vegetable sushi like i'll get like avocado rolls or av there's this place i go to they uh, i always order avocado mango rolls they know it's me when i call <laughs> but yeah so there's you know you can find ways to uh, you know japanese food chinese food you can find things you might have to ask questions about the sauces but you know and then mm -hmm. indian food also there's um, I've gone to restaurants where they've swapped out the the dairy milk and used coconut milk instead. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of a lot of places are usually have something that just happens to be vegan or maybe can be veganized um, in some way. Um, so yeah, it just takes a little bit of planning and research, but it's really once you once you learn, it's not it's not so difficult. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know um, that's uh, possibly one of um, you know another kind of like resistance. Um, for, for example, you know people are afraid of maybe eating out or you know like going out socially. But if you like say for example ring in advance um, to to a restaurant, tell them that you're you're vegan, and most chefs um, you know. They're, they they quite like the challenge actually yeah. of, of coming up with a with a vegan dish and and um you know pretty much anything can be um you know ve veganized so um you know I, I like um uh, as you say uh all it requires is a bit of um research um and then you know telephoning um that particular restaurant speaking to the to the chef and um I, I'm sure that um that they that they they would be happy to to make something vegan for you so you know and to the viewers at home yeah absolutely like I was recently at a wedding and told the waiter that I was vegan and they made me the the they, they were able to make me a plate with this like purple sweet potato mash with some portobello mushroom on top and some other like veggies on there so they were able to put together a very tasty veggie plate for me and it still looked it looked fancy too at the way <laughs> but all you have to do is ask and 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 if they say no then they say no but usually places are very accommodating mm -hmm. and yeah it, it's it, it's really not so bad um Shabari, i i feel like i could talk to you forever we always have such great conversations but i have to <laughs> go in a moment <laughs> but um this was really great. I, I I felt like it was important for to us to deep dive on some of these different issues. And so thank you for coming back and having this conversation with me. Oh, you're welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. And, and thank you very much for um, having me as your guest again. My, my pleasure. And I'm going to include the link uh, below this video of uh, my previous conversation with Shabari. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining in and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.